Welcome back. Okay, they call us here the great Hollywood North, and there's a reason why. A lot of Canadian content production here on this side of the border. Let's bring in Mike Apple and uh, one big player recognizing that. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Melanie. Yeah, Netflix uh, looking at setting up a Canadian office to sort of oversee its Canadian content production. I'm kind of surprised they don't actually have that already in place. But uh, one of their execs talking about either Toronto or Vancouver. Um, obviously, both cities have uh, some pretty big uh, TV and film production underway currently. But uh, this would just be the next step to uh, bolster that a little bit more. Quebec could also be, uh, you know, maybe Montreal. Uh, a lot of uh, content does come out of Quebec as well for Netflix. Um, you, you look back at this, though, and, and you say, okay, why? Is it just about the content? Right now, of course, the federal government is looking at legislation uh, related to a potential Netflix tax. Uh, the company is not subject to Canadian content regulations. It's not covered by the Broadcast Act. Would, could we see change there at some point that would actually require them to have uh, more specific Canadian content for Canadian viewers? So there, there might be some uh, things going on behind the scenes here related to this. Regardless, it uh, sounds like good, good news. Uh, you know, once they figure out where that office is going to be, whether it's uh, here in the GTA or uh, on on the West Coast. Absolutely. Um, the cryptocurrency craze. Um, we had we mm -hmm. had someone on yesterday talking about Bitcoin, yep. and some people here in studio were still like, "Okay, I think I think I get well, it. I think I get it." But yes. there's still so much volatility with it that still there's so many questions with it. Well, you have to. It would take about oh, I'd say about a good hour to explain uh, not just. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but the underpinning technology that makes the whole yeah, thing work. And that's absolutely. the blockchain network, which is being used by uh, several companies, the biggest companies in the world, for, um, for, for, for their transactions going on behind the scenes, not necessarily through cryptocurrencies. Anyway, what's happened here, though, Melanie, is the fact that Bitcoin has gone up to $46,000. But what is its intrinsic value? What is it based on? Is that just because somebody says it's worth that? Or does it actually have a, uh, a, a value? Is it a store of value? Well, the Bank of Canada, one of their deputy governors yesterday, uh, Governor Lane, talked about you know what they've been seeing. And they're calling it a speculative mania. Because, again, it, it's not based on a fiat currency, the Canadian dollar or the U.S. I, I mean, it is, but... Again, how do you do a transaction when something goes up 10 mm -hmm. or 15 percent in a day and then can drop just as quickly the next day? How do you base a transaction on that? So the Bank of Canada is looking at the idea eventually of getting into its own cryptocurrency. And I wouldn't be surprised to see others. And we heard that from the guest yesterday morning about, you know, central banks are, are mm -hmm. probably going to get in this game at some point and give it some legitimacy or government backing or what have you and of course the crypto people will say that's exactly what we don't that's want. what they don't want exactly <laughs> there you go all right mike as always a pleasure we'll talk to you again tomorrow all right thank you thank you it is 6 15 coming up next this petition and facebook group putting pressure on the government to keep march break in place we've been talking about that coming up next we're going to talk to the mom leading this movement and why she thinks canceling the week off is the wrong move that's next